We're here to train the mind. Because the mind is important. It has a huge power to shape our lives. And if it's not trained, it can misshape our lives. Because we all want happiness, and yet look at what we do. We create suffering. Because the mind is untrained. Because it doesn't know what it's doing. So the first thing in learning to train the mind is to watch it, to see what it does. You see the movements of the mind, you have to give it a still point against which you can measure the movements. So you stay with the breath. And that right there gives you a lot to notice, how the mind relates to the breath. When it's focusing on the breath, what does it say to itself about the breath? What questions does it have? And when it drops the breath, how does that happen? You're sitting here focused on the breath, and all of a sudden you're thinking about tomorrow. How did that happen? And how can you bring it back in a way that it'll want to stay? If you drag it back, it may want to run off again. So how do you make the breath interesting? How do you make the breath pleasant? How do you make this whole process something you want to learn about? These are things you learn through trial and error. We live in a time when people like to, would like to master things immediately. You've got all those cooking shows on TV which try to make gourmet cooking really quick and easy. All those craftsman courses, crash courses they have in the big hardware stores. The idea being that skills aren't all that hard. You can take a half an hour and you've got them. Psychologists have done studies of people who are really skilled. And they say it takes about 10,000 hours of work to really master a physical skill, a handicraft. And a lot of that is in trial and error, learning how to watch yourself in action. So an important part of the meditation is learning how to have the right attitude towards trial, how to have the right attitude toward error, so that you can actually learn from them. One of them is to be very clear about what you're doing, what you're setting about to do while you're staying here. You're going to focus on the breath. Try to notice where you focus on the breath, how much pressure you use to focus. And then try comparing different ways of breathing to see what feels best right now. You can vary the breadth, excuse me, you can vary the depth, the, the speed, the texture of the breath. Try to notice what feels best. When you notice something you like, stick with it for a while. You're still trying. Everything here is an, an attempt. It's an experiment. And if you look at it that way, then when things don't come out as you'd like, you can just chalk it up to experience. Come back and try again. The Buddha commented that. At the moment of death, you don't want to be tied up in remorse, you don't want to be tied up in worry. And the same attitude should apply to your meditation. Meditation is practice in how to live, how to die. 
you're applying the mind to this problem. How do you get it to stay with one thing? And the way you apply it to this problem will have an impact on how you apply it to other problems in life. And then there's the big problem, of course, when death comes. How are you going to handle that? And no one likes to go to, into death with the idea it's trial and error. So you want to learn some things now. Now about how to sense what will lead to good results and what will lead to bad results. Because you may find with the breathing that something that feels good to begin with after five minutes doesn't feel so good. You may be inducing a headache, say, or a stomach ache. When you notice that happening, then you back off. So well, let's try again. This willingness to keep trying again, trying again. That's important. And having the right attitude toward your mistakes is important. Seeing them as an opportunity to learn, rather than a reflection on who you are or what your potential is as a meditator. Some people learn quickly, other people learn slowly, but the important thing is that you learn. You see other people who are faster than you in the meditation? Well, that's their business. It's none of yours. Aside from the fact that maybe you can learn a few pointers from them, but you don't want to just sit there and compare yourself. Well, gee, that person's going really fast, I'm going really slow, something's wrong with me, and you go into a tailspin. The Buddha advises us, and this is what appropriate attention is all about, is see things simply in terms of cause and effect, skillful and unskillful. And the question of who you are or how worthy you are or what your potential might be, those questions don't enter into the equation. You try something and you want to look at the results. If you don't like the results, you try something else. And if you can't figure out another way to do it, just sit with it for a while and say, well, maybe I'm not at the point where I can think of anything new right now. Well, let's just sit with it and see what happens, what comes up. There's a certain amount of confidence that comes in patience, confidence being that maybe I can't figure it out right now, but give me some time. then something will come. You always want to have that kind of confidence in your practice. And that's for when the Buddha says to be ashamed of your mistakes. It's shame in the sense of realizing that those they're unworthy of you. You don't want to repeat them. And that's as far as you go. If you beat yourself up over them, he says, you're putting yourself in hell right now. You don't have to wait for the next lifetime. But if your attitude simply is that that kind of behavior, that kind of action is not up to my standards, there's a certain amount of healthy pride that goes into that. It's in that sense that shame is a good thing. The people who have no real pride, who have no real sense of the nobility and the dignity of being a human being. Those are the ones who have no shame. You don't want to be that kind of person. We're engaged in a noble task. So you look at your mistakes and view them as an opportunity to learn. You try to connect the mistake with what you did, see cause and effect. That's the essence of wisdom, seeing these connections. And as John Munn says, it's normal that when you're trying to follow the middle path, there are times you're going to go off to the left, times you're going to go off to the right. It's to be expected. Now, some people can correct themselves more quickly than others, but again, you're not 
you're competing with anyone else. You're not racing anyone else to the end of the, the end of the path. Your ability to notice how things are going and how to correct any problem that comes up, that's what develops your discernment. It's not a matter of knowing all the answers beforehand. There's a phrase in Thai, Rukon Gert. You know what's going to happen even before it actually happens. And that's not a it's not a, it's not a phrase that's used in praise of someone. It's basically kind of a know it all person who knows it all but really doesn't know anything. The person who does best at meditation is the one who admits up front that, hey, I don't know. Let me try this. Let me try that. And if you make a mistake, whoops, well, I'm not going to do that again. And there's a certain amount of cheerfulness, a certain amount of confidence that keeps you going. You don't beat yourself up over your mistakes. There's a passage where the Buddha says, if you notice that your behavior really has harmed somebody else, you realize, okay, that wasn't right, that wasn't a good thing to do, and you resolve not to repeat the mistake, and then you try to develop as much goodwill for yourself and as much goodwill for all beings as possible. The goodwill for yourself is what helps you not beat yourself up. The goodwill for other beings is what helps remind you that you don't want to harm people, anybody, in any circumstances. So that's the proper attitude to have toward a mistake. Realizing that you are constantly going to be faced with new choices all the time. You can't brood over past mistakes to the point where you start ignoring the other choices you're making in the present moment. You've got to be alive to the present. We're not passive observers here. We're active participants in our lives. So you always want to do what you can to put yourself in the best position to make the right decision right now. You, know, that you made a poor decision five minutes ago, you remember it, notice it, but remind yourself, okay, there's another decision coming up. I've got to be ready for that. So when you have the proper attitude toward trial and error, you can really learn from trial and error. It doesn't stay error all the time. It begins to turn into trial and success, trial and skill. And you're asked to have a sense of confidence. It starts out with humility, the humility that I don't know, but I can learn. That's how humility gets combined with confidence, in the right way. The confidence is what keeps reminding you there's got to be a way out. If you do something unskillfully, then you remind yourself that there's always a possibility that you can be done skillfully. And you're going to try to figure it out. It may take time, but that's not the issue. The issue is that you maintain your motivation, you maintain your confidence. So the mistakes don't get you down. Even things like a sense of shame and compunction, they don't get you down. They actually become help along the path, keep you focused. A sense of heedfulness helps you along the path. There's a realization that it really is important that you train your mind. You don't want anything else to get in the way. And you learn to use every situation, not only while you're sitting here meditating, but as you deal with other people, as you do other kinds of work, that you've got the opportunity to do whatever it is that's right in front of you as skillfully as possible. Try to make sure you maintain the right attitude, the same sense of confidence and humility.
and basic cheerfulness that will see you through. We're on a good path. That in and of itself should be a source of good cheer.